Lunch in the morning, lunch at night, lunch whenever you feel that it's right. There's no bad time for lunch. Also, time isn't real. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode five of the Young Blood Monday Lunch. Thanks for joining us. My name is RJ. I'm here with Graham. Bonjour, mes amis. <laughs> Graham, whose greetings from the back of the room get uh, get more elaborate every single time, and that's probably just going to keep happening. Um, we're so happy to have you here with us, listening to this brand new short play uh, by one of the members of Young Blood. Uh, Young Blood is a company of early career playwrights that uh, Graham and I co-run at Ensemble Studio Theater in New York City. Um, And the Youngblood Monday Lunch is a podcast series we've been doing to share the new works, the new short plays of our member writers with you. It's sort of the online version of a thing that we do in person. We've talked about this in in previous episodes, and I know some folks listening will be familiar with the Youngblood Sunday Brunch, which is the live in-person version of the Youngblood Monday Lunch. Um, But for those of you that haven't been able to uh, attend one, uh, or have never been to Ensemble Studio Theater, or even for those of you who may come to those and it's just been over a year, uh, and maybe you're missing it. I know I know we are. Uh, the Sunday Brunch, we do five short plays around a theme, and they write these plays, and we get uh, the most wonderful assortment of, of actors and directors to, to put them together in the week in advance of the Sunday performances. Um, and when you come see one, you come down 52nd Street uh, in Hell's Kitchen, New York, and you'd go farther west on 52nd Street than you think you have any any cause to go. You're like, surely if I go any farther, I'm going to be in the river. Uh, but no, you go a little farther, and you're at the Ensemble Studio Theater. Uh, and you come through the doors, and you come up a, a, a truly weird set of stairs to the second floor um, and into a lobby that is just a buzz with life. Uh, we, are, we are blessed with a wonderful energized audience who come to see these short plays uh, and eat breakfast food with us. Uh, we serve pancakes and and bacon and eggs and fruit salad and have an open bar of mimosas and Bloody Marys. Uh, and everybody grabs a plate and settles in and watches uh, some new plays. And it's a, it's a treat to do. It's a treat to share with people. Uh, we cannot wait to someday, someday, we are tentatively hopeful we'll get to do that in person again soon. And when we do, we really really hope that you can join us, and we can't wait to see you here. In the meantime, while that is not happening, we are doing this online, in your device, in the podcast listening platform of your choice, and Graham is going to tell you a little bit more about this episode of that. Picture yourself in a theater. Maybe it's the Ensemble Studio Theater. Maybe it's Shakespeare's globe. Before the show is about to begin, what is the one thing everybody does? They turn off their phones. You're asked to turn off your phone so as not to disturb the people around you and the performers on stage. When's the last time you did that? When's the last time any of us turned off our phones? Well, today, we're going to start again. I want everybody out there, everybody within the sound of my voice, to turn off your phone. I know something important might happen. I know there might be a call you're waiting for. This is your lunch. Turn off your phone. Lie back. Close your eyes. Put a piece of pizza on your face. Lie back and enjoy the play. Unless, of course, you're listening to this play on your phone, in which case, just forget I said anything. The theme of the first six podcasts of the Youngblood Monday Lunch is science, and that means that this is a collaboration with the EST Sloan Project. The EST Sloan Project is a partnership between Ensemble Studio Theater and the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to present new plays about science and technology. The EST Sloan Project celebrates science and progress, and as we do that, it's really important to acknowledge and to keep in mind that in the field of science, many discoveries and advancements have come at the cost of the exploitation through the unpaid labor 
and through the suffering of black, brown, and indigenous people. We want to honor their sacrifices and contributions to the process of science and to the theater that we create to celebrate it. We want to acknowledge that Ensemble Studio Theater and uh, all of the city of New York are located on Lenape Hoking. That is the unceded traditional territory of the Lenape Lenape people. EST want to pay respect to the Lenape Lenape and to all indigenous people that continue to live and work and create and contribute here on Lenape Hoking. If you don't know uh, the history of the land that you live on, you can go to uh, native-land.ca. You can look up uh, the place where you live or the place you grew up and learn about uh, the history of those lands. Now, we could not be prouder to share with you Episode 5 of the Youngblood Monday Lunch, a new play called Otter Delight, working title, by Youngblood's own Michael Harrison Feldman. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Welcome to InZone, the only environmentally focused conference call service. Please enter your passcode followed by the pound sign. You will be the second caller to join the line for... Oh, 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 um, uh, uh, Otter Delight, working title, science advisory call with Otter Consultant. Please announce yourself at the tone. Mark Freelander. Hi, Mark. Doris here with Dave. We're just waiting for Lauren. Great. Everyone at the network is just buzzing that Doris and Dave are exploring a new idea. Oh, that's sweet. You're our child whisperers. No, let's not get ahead of ourselves again. Oh, oh, Mark. Mm -hmm. While we have you, can I flag one teeny weensy little thing? Please, Doris, don't. This is a nothing burger. I understand, but he should know. Yes, Doris. Go ahead. You know, our son Robinson, the gay one. Mm -hmm. When we told him our next series was going to be about otters, he burst into laughter. Uh You see, he's an otter in his community, the gay one. It's what they call smaller framed hairier homosexuals. Bigger, older, hairier men like my Dave are bears. And if not yet of age, they call them cubs. Otters and bears and cubs. (laughs) Oh, my. Well... No one's canceling Winnie the Pooh. And it could be great for business. If our cute little otter bears became gay icons, maybe we'll even make the star of the show gay. And he he could be this sort of outspoken, confident kid otter trying to understand his otter ancestry. So just our son? Yes. I mean, we'll name him Robinson, Robinson the Otter Son. And oh, 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 okay. And we'll all march in the parade together as a family for promotion. What about an ocean parade? Like as part of the show? Yes. Oh, you're a visionary. Give me a kiss. I see that second hit show in your future. Lauren Dickinson from the Marine Center. Lauren, great. Mark Freelander, head of children's programming at the network. Hi, Lauren. This is Doris. I'm Dave. Apologies for being a little behind. A wannabe marine biologist trespassed the otter zone of our sanctuary. Oh, my Lord. Are the otters okay? (sighs) We're relieved no one was hurt. (laughs) Sounds like drama. Thank you for still hopping on. Of course. I should be doing this for free. Elves Island repeats literally saves me from so much parenting. Uh, Well, full circle. We're going to save the planet together. A perfect segue for a little context. Yes, please. The network has decided that climate change is a major issue. Okay. In 2021, we're dedicated to making the world notice and to become that leading voice on this issue. We're making commitments regarding emissions and behavior, but also seeking to create new content that addresses environmental issues. The way Elves Island taught kids about immigration from the perspective of the elves arriving at Ellis Island. Yes, exactly. Which is why we were so excited when Doris and Dave called with the seed of an idea for a show called Otter Delight. Working title. Yes, working title. Dave, Doris, maybe you want to share a little about your vision. I've just always thought otters were the most cuddly of creatures. So when I read about the possible relocation of otters to San Francisco Bay because of the bizarre increase in shark attacks in the wild, I showed the article to Doris. 
right away. And we just thought, well, wouldn't that be a colorful, delightful foundation for a series? Otters relocating to their new home and finding safety under the Golden Gate Bridge. What better way to educate children about conservation than through the otter? The adorable otter. Uh Uh-huh. The way they hold hands. (laughs) <laughs> she loves He's that. Mine right now. Okay, no, ow, not so tight. Sorry. Okay, yes. Well, for otters, it's not so much about love and affection as it is necessity. Holding hands is a practical maneuver to ensure they don't drift away from each other as they sleep. And that's why we've called on you. We want to capture the science of it all, the truth of the otter. And also create something that delights children and activates their imagination. Well, for me, what makes the sea otter so remarkable is its resilience. Mm. The way they have survived despite being hunted, relocated, scapegoated. Excuse me. Sorry. Lauren, this is Dave. From the little you just said, would you agree that sea otters are the Jews of the Sea Kingdom? Oh, uh, well, uh, I never thought about it, but it's uh, something to think about. Uh huh. So, any conversation about sea otters has to begin with three F words. Any ideas? Fingers. Feet. Fish. No. Famine. Flavor. Figs. Fauna. Falafel. Flags. Fantasy. Oh, oh, faces. Face time. Uh, uh, Facades. Fertilization. Fetuses. Family friendly. Freud. Here's a little hint I use with the kids. Otters don't have a layer of blubber, and the Pacific Ocean is cold. Burr. Which is how you can remember the first F word. Uh, Fur. It's fur. Yes. Fur. Otters have the thickest fur of any mammal, with as many as 165,000 hairs per square inch, which during the fur trade made it a hot commodity, if you will. (laughs) By the early 20th century, otters were nearly hunted to extinction. Uh, See? Jews. Honey. It strikes me as an angle. The creative process at work. Continue, Lauren, please. Otters spend hours every day grooming themselves by spinning and somersaulting to trap air bubbles under their fur for warmth. Cuties. But this constant primping isn't enough to keep them warm in the cold Pacific waters. Which brings us to the second F word. Food. To heat themselves, otters also eat and eat and eat. 25% of their body weight a day. Okay, Jewish. They feast mostly on shellfish, urchins, crabs, and clams. So not kosher. As the rabbi says, we eat shrimp to remind us. Yes, the guilt, it jolts us. Amen. Mm. Doris and Dave, maybe you want to mute yourself? Oh, sorry, yes. This is fantastic, Lauren. Please continue. Urchins dine on the marine plant kelp. So when otters with their large appetites are introduced into a habitat and start eating urchins, kelp forest, that's the third F word, forest, Forest. prosper and grow as high as 10 feet, creating a rich environment for species like salmon and rockfish to populate and hide from predators like sharks and killer whales. Any questions before I move on? Doris and Dave. I think you're still muted. Uh, hello? Hello? Uh, uh, hello? Uh, hello? Oh, no, oh, no, can you hear us now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, well, oh, no, so, <laughs> we were just saying that Solomon the Salmon and Rivka the Rockfish might be fun characters. A little thankful sidekicks to their kind conservationist otter neighbors. Goosebumps. They can escort the otters in the parade. More goosebumps. Please keep teaching, Lauren. Your knowledge bombs are elixir to our brainstorming minds. Oh, well, I do have a little surprise for you all. There is actually a fourth F word. Stop it. No way. Can we guess? Sure. Mm, uh, oh, fins. Fun. No. Faith. Fabric. <sighs> Fat. Fungus? Fangs? Uh, Farms. Fame. Fumes. Lauren, tell us, please. Fisherman. Ooh, I'm sensing another F word with this one. Friendship. Fishermen despise otters. 
or feud. As otters repopulate their homelands or are brought to new homes, valuable shellfish supplies deplete. Fishermen, mostly members of native populations, lose income. Now, can fishermen and otters live side by side in peace? Thank you, thank you Lauren. Uh, but before we ponder whether fishermen and otters are the Palestinian-Israeli conflict of the sea, can, can we just acknowledge that our job is to create educational children's television and kids will fall in love with otters? Yes? Um, 100%. Yeah, they'll want to pet the fur. Mm. And cuddle with them. Mm -hmm. And hold their hands. Aw, mm -hmm. they're just so adorable. Uh, about that. They're predators. Extremely aggressive, gluttonous, and sexually rambunctious. Especially the hypersexual males who are vicious as they compete for food and over a small population of female otters. They kidnap otter pups from their mothers as ransom for food or sex. They sexually coerce both otters and seals, even baby seals. They sometimes murder seals for no reason. And I've personally witnessed necrophilia. Uh, are, are you talking about the same otters I see on Google holding their cute little pups? The species that do grooming gymnastics all day to keep warm? I am. And when you say sexual coercion? Essentially rape. And n necrophilia. Intercourse with corpses. So otters are the Nazis? No! <laughs> what? Nazis. Th they're otters. Wild animals. Those poor baby seals. Yes, but seals grow up and sexually coerce penguins. Penguins? And penguins, well, they can be abusive and sometimes participate in prostitution. Hooker penguins? Sex workers, Dave, is the proper term, honey. And yet what really matters is that people still loved Happy Feet. I don't know. If I can contribute to continuing the false narrative around seemingly adorable animals as they go around doing who knows what to each other. Please, please, let's not give up on, on Otter Delight working title yet. Corpses. Mark. Corpses. What about humans? We murder. We kidnap. We rape. We take land. We start wars. We change habitats. Do you ever think about how many whole chickens you've eaten in your lifetime? Well, Dave and I always share a chicken. Yeah, and we turn the carcass into stock. For split pea soup. Oh, and matzo balls. I love you, matzo balls. Yeah, well, the key isn't to make the balls too round. My point is that- We have a mission-driven hit on our hands. Right, but I do have something no, no, to- No, 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 please don't, please don't. You've given us plenty to work with. So, some otters rape and murder, and they only hold hands for practical purposes. I don't care. I just can't let your science cloud the one idea that gave me hope today. Robinson, the otter son. See, all I had as a kid was Snow White on repeat. My mom even took me to a therapist to find out why I was so obsessed. We played games with sticks and pegs, and the doctor concluded that I saw myself in Snow White because I was fundamentally passive. But I actually saw myself in Doc. Grumpy, happy, sleepy, bashful, sneezy, and dopey. Because I was living in the woods waiting to find acceptance like the dwarves with Snow White. Then, the witch places the spell on her, transforming her into their Judy Garland, a diva fallen too young. And what do the dwarves do? They build her a shrine in the forest, a place to watch over her and worship her. And yet the role of saving her goes to the prince who, with a kiss, brings her to life and then sweeps her away to his castle, leaving those seven men without love lives, isolated in their cottage. I've now lived alone in a forest of my own creation for 35 years worshipping female pop stars. To this day, when my psychiatrist asks me if I've gone on dates with any women, I don't correct him. So please, Doris and Dave, write the animated gay otter environmental warrior San Francisco children's TV series. Uh, oh my god, Mark. 
Why haven't I set you up with our Robinson? You'll love him. He's so cute and funny and insightful. I, um... Your time in zone is ending now to conserve energy. We believe that it's not about what you do on the phone, but what you do with your time on Earth that counts. Go forth and remember the 3F mission that drives us. Fight fossil fuels. Thank you. Call ending. Hanging up now. You've been listening to a new play, Otter Delight, working title by Michael Harrison Feldman, directed by Colette Robert. Featuring Catherine Curtin as Doris, Daniel K. Isaac as Mark, Jonathan Randall Silver as Dave, Akia Wilson as Lauren, and also starring Cleo Gray as recording. Sound design by Jack Mullen. The staff of the Ensemble Studio Theater are Artistic Director Billy Carden, Executive Director Susan Vitucci, Associate Artistic Director, Director of Young Blood, and Director of the EST Sloan, Graham Gillis. He's right over there. <laughs> Director of Play Development and Associate Director of EST Sloan, Lizzie Furman. Co Artistic Director of Young Blood, RJ Tolan. That's me. General Manager Liz Uckman. Production Manager Jack Plow. Development Manager Aaron Hawk. Brand Marketing Manager Harrison Densmore. Communications and Audience Services Manager Samantha Sembler, Finance Director Jonathan Suarez, Literary Associate Nika Mae Anderson, Production and Operations Producing Apprentice Mariel Sanchez, Development Assistant Joey Nasta, and Facilities Manager Jose Sanchez. The theme song for the Youngblood Monday Lunch is by Youngblood's own Jake Brash and Nadia Leonhard Hooper, and incidental music for the podcast episodes is by Jake Brash. Our podcast sound engineer is Caroline Eng. Ensemble Studio Theater is encouraging all of our audiences to support Black Girls Do STEM. That is a nonprofit organization that envisions a future with equitable representation for Black women in all the STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Their mission is to inspire curiosity in Black girls in all communities for all those STEM fields through education, access, and opportunity. We encourage you to support them at bgdstem.com. Uh, support their important work and a more equitable future. We also encourage everyone to join the fight against uh, acts of hatred and violence toward Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Uh, we encourage you to visit stopaapihate.org slash act now. Thank you so much for joining us for episode five of the Youngblood Monday Lunch. So glad to have shared Otter Delight, working title, working title. with you today. We look forward to sharing new plays with you on coming Mondays in coming weeks. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to turn your phone back on. Talk to you soon.